You know, every year we see it with the draft process and specifically when you get to the combine. There are guys that really, really help themselves and they increase their draft stock significantly. And a lot of people will have to go back and look sometimes to see if the film matches what the combine says. Or are we determining if they are just a workout warrior or are they a workout warrior who hasn't fully been unleashed yet and they could end up being a better pro player than they were a college player? Sometimes that's what happens with the combine. And then sometimes you'll have guys that go to the combine and they really hurt themselves. They certainly don't help themselves. And then sometimes you have those truly special, horrible combine performances. Orlando Brown Jr. this year had just that. I mean, for Christ's sakes, there's a major part of me that wonders if it was him and Rich Eisen actually running the 40 side by side in a competitive place, if Rich might not have beaten him, especially if he was out of the suit and stuff. I mean, I understand Orlando Brown is 6'7", 350 pounds, but you're talking about late 40s Rich Eisen, the epitome of mayonnaise slow happy and excited when he's breaking six seconds in the damn 40. Like, that's how bad Orlando Brown's 40 was, Christ almighty. Imagine if it wasn't just a simulcast thing. If Rich was in regular, like, t-shirt, shorts, like actual workout gear, and they ran head-to-head, -head, my money might be on Rich Eisen. That's not good. This is a studio host and radio show podcast host going up against a potential NFL prospect. Offensive lineman or not, that's horrid. And you talk about putting up 14 reps in the bench, looking disinterested in the field drills, not looking very smooth in the field drills, getting yelled at, at by coaches in the field drills, like he didn't really care to practice, like he didn't really want to be there. It was not a good <laughs> turn of events for Orlando Brown Jr. There's no question. And I think... The challenge is now you go back from the combine and you go back to the film and you say, okay, maybe he's not a guy that fits that type of form. And he doesn't. The combine is not a place where an Orlando Brown is going to stand out. That is not going to be a place that does him a lot of justice. What you ultimately have to do is go back to the film and see if you're confident enough and believe enough in what you see. And I feel like for Orlando Brown, he's a really polarizing prospect and will definitely be in probably the most polarizing of the offensive line prospects because it's going to be a lot about perspective and system fit and such. You'll probably have teams that really like him. They're not bothered by that lack of combine athleticism because they see the length, they see the play strength, they see the size, and they see a guy that can absolutely engulf and overwhelm defenders on the edge. And you're going to have other teams be like, we need somebody that can hold up on an island. We don't view him as a guy that can sit there and play left tackle at the NFL. And we're not even sure if he has the athleticism to play right tackle. And are you going to really play him at guard at six foot seven? Ooh. So I'm sure opinions are going to be all over the place, just like they'll be all over the place in the comments to this scouting report. And that's fine. We'll find out in a couple of years. Um, but when you look at Orlando Brown, that's really what it comes down to. Because he's a monster of a man, just like his dad was. It's crazy. It's like they're spitting images of each other. Like imagine that Orlando Brown, as huge as he was, his son is basically the same damn size. And even though he only put up 14 reps in the bench at the combine, and you could talk about, well, that's because of the long arms, or well, he didn't prepare and work out very well beforehand, uh, I worry more about the play strength than the measurable bench press strength. And you know, I'm just saying, he has the ability to physically dominate, overwhelm, and engulf people. He absolutely does. You see this as a run blocker where he, when he wants to, can just push a defender wherever the hell he wants, and they're out of the play. It doesn't matter who it is. And especially if you get that weight and that size and that bulk of man moving forward, he can completely wipe out defenders. He can pancake the hell out of somebody if he really wants to. That's a question, if he really wants to. Um, he, he can be overpowering. It's frustrating at times when you watch him because you feel like he could be more physically dominant than he actually is. He could be 
better as a drive blocker in the running game. He can sit there and really drive people off their spots, but there are technique issues as to why he doesn't. And that can be frustrating to watch. Because when you look at him in a lot of other places, when you get past the size, the height, the weight, and the length, and the strength, he's got flaws all over the place. I mean, as a pass blocker, you worry about him being able to hold up on an island. His pad level's not great. He gets really, really high. So edge rushers, and especially edge rushers that are able to dip and get low, are going to be able to bend the edge on him like crazy if they're not going to be able to just fly right by him. And he doesn't have that lateral agility to be able to sit there and maintain his kick slide. If he gets behind at all, he's getting out of his kick slide, and then you're in all types of trouble, just all types of trouble. He's frustrating, too, when you talk about his hand usage because when he uses his hands and decides to use his hands, like I said, he can overwhelm, engulf, and destroy defenders. But he can get way too wide with his hands. He gets late with his hands. He'll get himself some holding penalties. He could be so much better with his hands. Like, the lateral agility, the athleticism might never be there. But if you took that size, that length, that strength, and you got better hand usage, then he'll be able to stick at the NFL level. But is he going to want to work at it? Um, he's not much of a knee bender. If he's any type of bender at all, it's a waist bender. But in general, he plays with a really high pad level, which is natural for a guy that's freaking six foot seven trying to hold up on the outside. While he can use his length to get leverage and keep defenders out of his body, if he doesn't and they get into his body at all, he can get driven back more than you would like from somebody that is so damn big. And, you know, while he shows, once he gets that weight moving straight ahead, that he's got a little bit of athleticism, anything you ask him to do from an agility standpoint, a side-to-side -side standpoint, you can forget it. And then to top it all off, you see a guy that does it what he wants to, and more often than not, doesn't seem that interested. It almost feels like he's doing it just because his daddy did it, and he's a really big guy. So it's the easiest way for him to make a lot of money in his 20s in his life. And, and if that's the case, fine. But when you're talking about drafting a player, you worry about the things that you saw at the combine that he just didn't seem to care that much. So what is his work ethic going to be like? I didn't really see much improvement in him between 2016 and 2017. How much do you really think he's going to work at his craft, improve, and get better at the NFL? Like some of these other things, hand usage, leverage, those are things you could work on or those are things you could figure out other ways to compensate for those deficiencies. Sometimes it can be really, really hard to compensate for a lack of effort, for a lack of mode or a lack of desire, a lack of want to. Sometimes you just can't do anything about that. And if he's natural, always been able to kind of coast, sometimes these guys just aren't able to f flip it on at the turn of a switch. So when I look at Orlando Brown, I'm significantly concerned because I see a guy that can be an overpowering mauler outside with those deficiencies in terms of athleticism and lateral agility and footwork and still say he could hang outside probably better as a right tackle, but maybe if you got him some help sometimes against better uh, speed rushers, he could stay at left tackle. Because if you can coach him up even more in these strength areas, put strength to strength, you can mask some of these other deficiencies. But like I said, I worry about his desire to want to work on and improve in those deficiency areas. And he has a lot of deficiencies once you get past the size, the length, and the play strength. He's got a lot of deficiencies. That's why I put a third round grade on him. I don't know what his draft stock is at this point. You always have to remember, it only takes one team to fall in love with a guy. For all we know, he could still end up going in round one. He just as likely could go in the fourth or fifth round on day three. That's how wide his draft range is. I feel like realistically, you could say, well, his draft range is probably more round two to round four to five. That's still a really wide draft range. You know, the best hope for him is he can get into a really good situation where he gets an offensive line coach that can connect with him, that can relate to him, and can really work with him and understands what he has versus what he might never be and get the most out of him. He could be a productive offensive tackle in the NFL, but I would not be surprised at all if he busted out of the league in three years.